What is up, everybody, and welcome to Warpoint Weekly, your so source for nerdy noobs. I'm Rob. As always, I'm joined by my gracious and beautiful co-hosts. We got Bren up in the corner. What up? And Jay down below. What up? Uh, and yeah, for those of you listening, you can't see our beautiful faces, but I assure you we're smiling on this beautiful, beautiful morning. <laughs> I'm not. I'm scowling. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful Sunday morning of August 1st. Right. God, did, God, did wow. July fly by so fast. So now, uh, we're, talk, now we're in the hottest month. Yay. Talking about, you know, August 1st, it is Spider-Man Day. So happy Spider-Man Day to y'all. Woo. So uh, is anybody going to be playing Spider-Man today? Watching no. Spider-Man? No. Me? No. I got yard work to do after this. Um, Not even the classic cartoons? And maybe, maybe, phrase, I got yard work. I'm going to procrastinate. Maybe I will play some Spider-Man today. Maybe I will. <laughs> Rob's like that beautiful, beautiful remote play that I can do from work. Uh, no, I'm, so I'm off today because I was at a wedding yesterday. Oh, that's right. You know, so I, I might just uh, install it on the pro that I have now. And, and yeah. So well, don't, we're, don't let him lie. He's going to take a nap. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. So, Brent, you want to talk about what we're talking about? <laughs> Why, certainly. Why, certainly. Talk about. <laughs> So in today's show, we will be discussing the uh, PlayStation beta that's going to be coming up soon where they have un finally, finally, I was so happy when I saw this, they're unlocking the M.2 slot for this beta process. And as Rob has added on, they're adding 3D audio without headphones. And a couple other things too, like trophy tracking and... Uh, we were going to get into that, Robert. We'll get into it. I'm just saying how excited he is. I He's am. like, I no, we're not talking about it till we, I can talk about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, Brent's like, I'm going to fucking talk about it. No. You will He's wait like, for I've me. been reading this over for three days straight, trying to make sure that I know every single word. <laughs> Dude, looking. every every day I have registered five times. <laughs> I want to be part of the beta. Please. I don't even know if it'll work. 30. I have I have signed up for betas in PS4 and not been chosen. So hopefully, 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 I I did get chosen years ago for the Dark Souls 2 beta. Uh, I don't I don't think that was Sony. I think that was from FromSoft though, because mm. they were doing server stress tests for because that's when they added online play. Yeah. Mm. But back on track here, we have a lot of news regarding uh, Blizzard, Activision, and now Ubisoft. Yes, as we did point out. We did point out the, on letter. the live show on Wednesday. And uh, we, we will wrap up the show discussing Scarlett Johansson's lawsuit to Disney and how Emma Stone is, in quotations, weighing options to follow suit. Can, can I just say, like, that right there makes me laugh so fucking hard. <laughs> I know. And, and, and I think... Rob and I had Rob and I had a little bit of a discussion about it before you jumped in, Jay. And, uh, I yeah. Think, they, I think they, we got some various they, opinions on this. We do have well, some various opinions. Well, my, fir my first reaction was, well, it was nice to see Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, but before we get into any of that... And we kind of already touched on it. Uh, Brent, what have you been up to, bud? I know it's been a short week. You know, it's only been like three or four days since we did the live show, but. I know. So not a lot on my end, but uh, I've worked a lot of overtime the last couple of days. A um, little further in uh, Trails of Cold Steel. Hopefully I'm getting getting close to that end there. Because uh, <laughs> I got an email from eBay saying that my international package of Tra Col uh, Trails of Cold Steel 2. Sorry. Wow, I almost messed that up. <laughs> it's going oh, to be God. arriving sooner than they expected. Awesome. Awesome. Pending customs. But yeah. if we know anything about the U.S. border, it won't be hard. <laughs> <clears throat> yep, looks it's like a game. Nice little, Send it through. Nice little nice little crack in there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We're going to open it up and look for cocaine. What are you talking about? I... Uh, <laughs> I've been missing zombies, 
but I'm refusing to play right now. Yeah. For reasons that we know. Um, I have been eyeing up SSDs, which we will discuss here in a little bit. And I started watching the boys. There you go. Yeah. There, there, really there's nothing out. like watching Carl Urban sit at a religious gathering <laughs> and explain to a priest why God is a cunt. <laughs> I love it. Is hilarious. It. Carl Urban is a world treasure that we do not deserve. Right. Yeah. Such a great actor. So underrated and always listed as a backup character. Right. No, he played Doom. He played Doom. He played Judge Dredd. But if you look, those were movies that they, they've become more of cult classics than box office hits. I mean, it, it was horrible, but yeah, it is a cult classic, especially the, the part where he, he injects a super serum and he starts going through uh, murdering demons like an original Doom game. Mm -hmm. I was like, yes, this is what I, I what I came here for. <laughs> yeah. And then The Rock turned into a bear in a hell and it was just weird. <laughs> yeah but yeah the the boys are so hilarious especially what happens at the soup club right their little their little nightclub i still i still thought it was amazing to watch like the very first part where he's like like i love you i love you too a train <laughs> just runs right through her yeah i was like oh this is how this show is gonna be <laughs> oh i see yeah, instantly, instantly hook as soon as that happened. Uh, so yeah, um, I I, I, log, I had to log in to fourteen because I got a notification that well, if you don't log in to the game in I think like thirty days, they send you an email that they will demolish the house you own because yeah. housing housing is such a big issue in that game. Yeah, which uh, now I'm regretting changing servers years ago because <laughs> Rob and I owned like three houses. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we we changed servers because the server was dead. And now those houses are wiped. Oh, those, as soon as you change servers, the house is wiped. But uh, now the servers are like completely full everywhere. So you could have uh, yeah. made money on it. Yeah. Well, not even just made money. We could have just kept our shit. Yeah, they they changed the ruling. Mm. You're you're not allowed to own more than one house. Rob and I had three. Well, and technically, we might have been able to still own them because you owned a house, I owned a house for private residence, and then we had a free company house, so we might have been yes. good. Mm. Which is which is what now a lot of these bigger free companies do. Yeah, they just buy them all up, and each member yeah. buys it up. You know, it's like ridiculous. I'm getting. Feedback? Getting a lot of not feedback, but it's like I like, like horse galloping. Yeah, I got that too. Huh. Okay. Anyways, no, that's that's all I've been up to. Jay, what what about you, bud? Um <clears throat> working, housework, security system set up and all that fun jazz, taking care of the animals. Um I haven't really been playing much, working my way through Sopranos and uh, Banshee. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I've been doing. Nice. Really, really boring shit. Did stay up too late last night playing Borderlands, so there's that. <laughs> oh, that's what we could play. Because I bought Borderlands 3, and I haven't even installed it yet. Is Borderlands mm. crossplay? Not with PlayStation. Oh, I do have Borderlands on my PlayStation, but I, I need another get another monitor before I can set up my, my PlayStation. Mm. You gonna you gonna go with four monitors? <laughs> yes. No, it's not gonna be hooked up to the computer. It's gonna be you know separate to the PlayStation. But I feel you. Essentially, four monitors. Just I didn't think about my mounts and. I didn't realize that the two monitors I had weren't uh, VGA compatible. 
Mm. So I'm actually using an old TV for my second monitor. Oh, nice. It's a small little little piece of crap that the missus got years ago. Yeah. Mm. If it works, it works, right? Well, I'm going to end up buying a new monitor, like the one that, the 144 hertz one that I have. I'm going to just buy another one of those. Nice. It's always nice to, like, match up your monitor so that the perspectives are easier. Mm -hmm. Um, See, I made that mistake. I ended up, when I first got the computer, I bought a used Acer monitor. It's actually a really great monitor. And then I bought two other Acer monitors, but they're a little bit bigger the dimensions don't match up so like you could just tell that they're different monitors and it yeah kind of bugs yeah, me three, from times all three of my monitors are different i have an hp a mm. pixio and a vizio tv <laughs> right. no apex not even a vizio nice uh so yeah i've been let's see what did i i, I watched more loki um i got one episode left uh i was at a wedding yesterday that was fun um <laughs> I I don't even think I've I've really no oh no you know what I have been playing the Trials of Cold Steel, Trails of Cold Steel. My bad. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> then fucked up. I finally got through the prologue on that. You know it was only like two and a half hours long for the fucking prologue. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, just just two and a half. Well, it you like like you start like off you you start off on this area where you you play the, the this you're running through and doing this stuff. And then it goes back six months earlier to whenever you first get to the school, because it's like a battle school. And then you got to go through, like, your introduction into the school and doing a little couple things with that. And then you're finally through the the introduction chapter. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm finally on chapter one. It just So proud. It, yeah, it took so long to get there. So proud. Good job. Golf clap. Golf clap. Yay, came for me. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's that's pretty much all I've been doing. So, Bren, I will let you take the first one because I know you are dying to go. <laughs> He's literally like half chub right now, ready to do this. Yes, I am. I'm so ready because I because I bought another game too, which I forgot to tell you guys about. Ooh, what you buy? <clears throat> I bought the Neo Collection. Ah, nice, nice. For PS5. So now you bought those games twice? Yes. (laughs) It's going to turn into Kingdom Hearts. And their season passes, too. Well, the season pass comes with it. Um, Then the joy of explaining why your character's ass is hanging out while you're playing. Uh, (laughs) So, yeah, once I figure out how to, if I can bring over my save data so I don't have to start over. Right. Um, Sony is taking signups to roll out their beta software release to unlock the M.2 to verify that, you know, because originally he said, what, 9,000 megabytes a second. Yeah was the onboard SSD read and write speeds, which we know you can't get that with something that plugs in. Right. So I guess they're settling now at 7,000. And I want to make, I want to make sure that I'm right about this. Is it okay? Yeah. It's 7,000 megabyte read speed, 5,300 write speed. I want to make sure I get that right, the sequential read and write, so I want to cross those. Um, <laughs> and they haven't released when they are rolling it out. They have announced that you will be contacted by email if you are selected. And as Rob has pointed out to me earlier before we started recording, if you've signed up for beta on the PS4, you are carried over and grandfathered. Yeah, if you've if you've so been now, a beta tester before. So now I feel like my chances are even a little bit smaller. Because although I've signed up for many beta programs in PS4, I was never chosen. Right. Um, 
We'll see. Can't and- tell you like just the the amount, the price amount of some of these SSDs. Ooh. Honestly, so, though, yeah, you I, know what though? I, I mean, was going to get into that I was, next. I was going to say though, yeah, they they seem like they're a little pricey, but not really if you look at the specs. I mean, you know, especially for like PC stuff, they're not all that much more pricey for those specs. So he, here's the thing: buy a PC then. That's pretty much what this is. I mean, <laughs> no, it's not. Well, it's it, a non-upgradable. It, it's, <laughs> it's a little. It's a. I'm seeing these articles, and it's a little misleading because they're saying that they like the one that we have here, Video Games Chronicle, because they're talking about Mark Cerny revealed his SSD choice. Mm-hmm. Right. Their article is saying that PS5 finally enabled SSD storage expansion, meaning that this isn't a beta. It's already rolled out, which these articles need to watch how they're labeling these things. Right. Well, it says that... Um... And... It and says we this, wonder why we've reached an era of games journalists that can't be trusted. Well, it says that, you know, PS5 this week via an update rolled out to beta users. How can it be this week? It's Sunday. Technically, by the calendar, it is the start of the week. Well, I mean, I you guess know, people the, are the guys at access. Yeah, the guys at Sony aren't working. Uh, hold on. Because I'm going to go in and check my email real quick. <laughs> so we're going to uh, do an unlock, on, on, uh, record search mail, view, search looking mail. For shit. All right. Search my email for PlayStation. Uh, no, I got, an, I got an email from PlayStation earlier because I made sure to go in and add Plague's Tale yeah. to my library before it disappears on Tuesday. And, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I haven't gotten anything else from PlayStation. And that's like, they haven't even said when they're going to be rolling these emails out, which hopefully we'll know by tomorrow because Sony likes to do things on Tuesdays, right? That's when they update their stores. That's when they change their sales. Titty Tuesday. We got gotcha. you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> why they do it <laughs> no so cerny cerny himself has chosen the western digital where is the uh sn850 with heat sink now cerny's in california and i've a lot of people said that if you live in high climate areas the heat sink is definitely no 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 so sony themselves said using an m.2 ssd with your PS5 console requires effective heat dissipation with a cooling structure such as a heat sink. You can yeah. attach one to your M.2 SSD yourself, either in a single-sided format or double-sided format. And there are also M.2 SSDs that have cooling structures such as heat sinks built in. Yeah, it's you have to have a heat sink. It's yeah. just too hot. Okay. Well, I'm just uh, from a lot of the, a lot of the stuff that I've seen. Uh, like I said, it, um, so straight from PlayStation's website. So, um, how, how, well, so wait a minute. How does Sony know if it has a heat sink on it? What do you, well, I mean, if it doesn't, you're just going to burn up your drive and then you're going to have to buy a new M.2. I mean, technically you don't need it if you just want to keep replacing them, but, um, I mean, but for the it, fucking price, four terabytes, a thousand dollars, over a thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean, that, that, like I said, that's still the price for PC expansion. Then just buy a PC. <laughs> go ahead, go buy a graphics card right now, bud. I'm not buying a graphics card. I'll just buy a pre-built. Go ahead, go buy a pre-built with a 3060 in it. I don't have the money for it. Yeah, you know why? Because I'm broke. Because they're like no, grand. because the 3060 is fucking quadruple the price it should be. Just like these fucking SSDs are starting to get. Calm down. It'll be okay. Oh, uh, anyway. You're mad at scalpers, not me. I understand, but don't get that tone. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Sony says that, you know, it has to be a PCI Gen 4 M.2 NVMe SSD, and it can range from 250 gigabytes to 4 terabytes um, with the cooling structure requirements that I said before. 
and it yeah. has to have 550 megabytes sequential read speed or faster. Um, it can be 22... 5,500. That's what I said. So I thought you said 550. No, 5,500. Yeah, 5,500 mm. or faster. Um, well, yeah, we know it's written. I'm telling you what I heard you say. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Either way, 5,500 or yeah. faster is recommended. Um, the module width is 22 millimeters. The form factor, like we said before, M.2, type 223, 2242, 2260, 2280, or 22110, which is basically the length on them. Yeah. Um, like the, the first one is the numbers can be found on the retail listings for M.2 SSD devices. The first two digits refer to the width, the remaining to the length. So all those are 22 wide, you know, 30 long, 42 long, 60 long, 80 long, and 110 long. Um, I don't so, <clears throat> and then it gives the, the, the cooling structure sizes that it needs to be. You know, smaller than 110 by 25 by 11.25. Um, and it gives the height and all that. Now, there's a lot of people I've seen that are complaining. Oh, you got to take the system apart to install the, S the, the M.2 SSD. And it's uh. like, well, yeah. And, you know, I, I did see some people go, well, you know, Xbox, you, you just plug it into the back. Yeah, and with X okay. with Xbox, you're still only getting like what is it, two thousand megabytes per second top tier speed. Twenty twenty five hundred. Is it twenty five? Is it twenty five hundred? Yeah. So yeah, I mean you're not for two hundred dollars for a, a one terabyte at half the speed. Yeah. And the only only way to achieve these speeds is by directly having you hooked up to the motherboard. Yeah. Which I've done it. Do you know how hard it is to get the plate off of the PlayStation? It's not that's hard. Easy. I was about to say, was, was it not as easy so, as that's that video we watched of them breaking down a PS5? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's literally the back corner. You just grab it. You pull back a little bit because it has... They're not locking tabs. They're just pins that hold it in place. Right. You roll it back a little bit to lift that pin out of place. And then you just smack the bottom, and it lifts up. Well, it slides up. And then you just need a, a uh, screwdriver to remove the cover from the expansion take slot. The screw, take, take the screw out. There's a plate that it it's kind of held down by – it's kind of taped on. Yeah. You just – you peel that back. Right. And voila. Voila. I, the <laughs> Rob – I mean, we we all know the PlayStation hard drives. What the PS4 Pro, which Rob will find out soon, it's on the back. Yeah. You just you have to kind of grab it and pull a little bit, and the the whole plate pops off, and then you take the screw and slide the thing up. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, uh -huh. <clears throat> okay. But I I'm gonna sit down. I, I want to look to see. I want to look at all these specs and stuff because they're saying that. So far, two manufacturers have confirmed compatible drives, and that's Seagate and Western Digital. But I was also looking at a Samsung one. Well, and that, that's the thing. Like, but I I don't think the Samsung is compatible because I didn't see a heatsink model. Well, here's the thing: you could buy a heatsink. You can put a heatsink on <clears throat> on your M.2s. You just gotta make sure it's the right size. Well, yeah, and I mean heatsinks aren't all that expensive either because i i love samsung drives <clears throat> like on new I, egg right I now a, i have a 500 gig ssd in my pro that's been there oh fuck several years and it still holds up it still works I have hundreds of hours of on uh, Final Fantasy fourteen on that hard drive, and I haven't had a problem with it. Right. But uh, so without it having a heat sink for it, I guess that yeah, it would fail to meet the specs to well, be installed the on a PS five. No, no, no. Because like, if you're what what which model is it? Is it a twenty two eighty? Um, 
Give me one second here. Let me go back and look. Uh, is a Samsung Evo 980, I believe. Give me one second here. Stupid Amazon app on the computer. It's what? probably my laptop. So it's, yeah, it's giving a 2280. Me... You're looking at the one Nine. terabyte? Yeah. The 980 Pro? Yeah. Yeah, okay. It's what a, the heck is going on? It's a 2280. So right now on Amazon using EK Water Blocks uh, M.2 MVME heat sink, it is 15 bucks to throw a heat sink on it. So it's not like it'd be all that expensive. And it the size of the heat sink matches the size is required. So you would be good to go. There you go. Next project. Well, no, I'm just saying, like, you know, it, that's the thing. Like, oh, the only real requirement that you need. And that, that's the thing. Like, yes, you know, uh, Seagate came out. I'm actually looking at the Seagate Fire Seagate Fire Cuda. It has an EK water mm -hmm. block heat sink on it. <laughs> so what did wait the the sequential rights said fifty five hundred right? Yeah, that's the requirement. Okay, that's why the Samsung doesn't meet it. The sequential rights is only five thousand. Yeah, well that then there you go. <clears throat> so they're five hundred short. Yeah, and uh, you know, Samsung will come back with one. Oh, I'm sure. Whether they know what it, I'm what sure. they have to put out. But yeah, that, I think that that's going to be the the biggest factor is the sequential write speed, read uh, read speed. I don't think it's the write speed. I think it's the read speed. Well, is the um, at the time of writing, the vast majority of internal SSDs, almost all of them, in fact, will not work with the PS Five because of the fifty five hundred megabyte read speed of the console's own SSD. So it has to be 55 or above. Yeah. So read speeds. Yes, read speeds. Let's just make sure we, we get this right. Uh, where's it? Uh, I have it pulled up here. Yeah, sequential read speed of 5,500 or faster is recommended. It doesn't say it's required, just recommended. I mean, I ain't going to use anything less. Um, and then it says... Uh, it doesn't say. Uh, th oh, um, it cannot guarantee that all... Sony cannot guarantee that all M.2 SSD devices meeting the described specifications will work with your console and assumes no responsibility for the selection, performance, or use of third-party products. If it blows up, sorry about your luck. Well, I think... It, will it even read it, though? That's the thing. If if you go to the Samsung one. Well, here's here's what we're going to have to do is maybe we'll, uh, we'll try it. Bite that $200 bullet. Well, if it doesn't work, send it back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just say, hey, it didn't work with my system. Send it back. They don't have to know what the fuck he used it for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, I ordered the wrong one. My bad. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll have to go with that one then. <clears throat> yeah, Mark Cerny chose the SN850. Uh, the Seagate, uh, where's that Fire model Cuda. number? Yeah, the Seagate Fire Cuda 530. You have to be, because I tried looking up Fire Cuda 530 on Amazon. Yeah. It kept only giving me 520. I had to actually go to Seagate's website, click on where to buy the SN uh Sorry, I don't know why I said SN, the Fire Cuda 530. Click on that on where to buy. Then click on the Amazon link just to get to the 530. Mm. Amazon's really goofy. But yeah, you know what? When it comes to... Um, 
even even Newegg does that too. If you type in the Fire Cuda five thirty, it keeps bringing up the five twenty. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's just because it's sold out. Probably mm. be a safe bet. So, um, yeah. Well, maybe we'll have to look in and. Okay, well, Newegg find, has find Newegg, compatible drives, and Newegg has them in stock. I know it's on pre-order; they're not even out yet. The five thirties. Yep. Yeah. The Seagate Fire okay, so five thirty. So they're not even technically out; they're still in pre-order. Release date is August thirtieth. Okay. Um. That's why, like, no matter what store I looked, I couldn't find them. Uh, Wow. There were listings. Wow. There, there were listings with prices. Sequential read speed? Yeah. 7300. <laughs> yeah. Right yeah, speed little, is 6000. It's a little it's a little better than the Western Digital, but the Western Digital is out already. Well, and the, on Newegg, as of now the pre-order is 5 or 240. But yeah. It does not have a heat sink. It does have a heat sink model, but it's more. It's like 270, 280. Okay, well, on Newegg, they don't... Oh, there it is. Never mind. Um, 260. That one is out of stock, so that must have come out already. Or or scalpers claim them all. Well, because... ETA, ETA is 830. So... Even then, it so still looks like it was a were... pre-order that was just sold out of pre-orders. Because, on to my next thing, uh, scalper, a scalper group, I don't know if this is a scalper group or just another guy, but uh, yeah, the Western Digital Black 1 terabyte SN850 with heat sink has been completely bought up. Uh, I don't remember the group's name because now the listing is down. They were selling them for $625. Go figure. Mm -hmm. So as of right now, it is Sunday, August 1st at 10, 10 a.m. Uh, I got up at 730, started getting things ready for this recording, and started looking into these drives when I saw the... Uh, article and it was available yes so and 750 the, is that what you said oh sorry sn 850 okay the one terabyte with heat sink on amazon it was for it was available for purchase on amazon for the what was it 230 240 dollar price it was all in a matter of an hour, they were all gone and they were available through a third party seller on Amazon for $625. Jeez. Okay. Well, you know, here's some, some things that I'm looking at with this though. Um, <clears throat> so if you go on Newegg and you type in the specs that you need. Yeah. There's multiple ones that match the requirements. Oh, yeah? On Seagate's website? On Newegg's. Newegg's website. Yeah. But um, if they don't come with heat sinks, they're not going to be listed as compatible on the website. But like you said, you just buy a heat sink and slap yeah. it on there yourself. Yeah, you could buy a heat sink for 20 bucks and slap it on your yourself. Like, there's this one company, I've never heard of them, um, Sabrent. But, oh, yeah. I, I've heard of them. They're, they're slowly popping up everywhere on but, Amazon. And, and they're a USA company developed by Sabrent in the USA. Um, one terabyte Rocket NVMe PCIe 4, 4.0 M.2 2280 internal. Da, 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 da. Let me see where the specs are. C 
sequential right and I'll see sequential write speeds are only 5000 megabytes even though I typed in 5000 plus well that's why 5000 plus that means the minimum threshold set is 5000 but I thought write speeds didn't matter I thought it was read speeds I, I read speeds yeah oh so it's only as a 5000 read speed yeah Oh, well, yeah, that's it doesn't. Okay, now this one does. It's 200 bucks. Um, and it has a read speed of 7,100 and a write speed of 6,600. Oh, what brand is this? That's the Seabrunt. 200 bucks. Like I said, it doesn't have a heat sink on it, so you'd have to put a heat sink on it, which 20 bucks. Um, but yeah, I mean that there would, it, it's in stock right now, ready to go. And it's a one terabyte. They also have a two terabyte, <laughs> which substantially jumps up in price. It's 470 for a, a two terabyte. And then mm. for a four terabyte, you're at a grand. Mm. Yeah. That's same with the fire Cuda one, but I, I imagine the four terabyte won't meet the height requirement. No, it'll meet it. It's still a uh, still the same. The four size. terabyte meets the four terabyte meets the height requirement. Yeah, because it I doesn't for that size. It's still a twenty two eighty. Holy crap! It like I said, you just have to uh, <clears throat> you have to throw the heatsink on it yourself, but it's still the same same size. Same read Times and write like speed. this, I wish we had a CNC, Rob. Mm -hmm. So we can make we our can own make heat our, sink. We can make our own heat sink with liquid metal cooling. I know. Like the CPU uses. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I mean, there's multiple ones on... Well, it'll have to be through Amazon so I can do the return, the easy return stuff. Mm-hmm. There's also, and I, I've been following these guys for a little bit too, Patriot. I've never heard of that one. Yeah, Patriot Viper VP30, one terabyte, 2200 or yeah, 2200 bucks. No, 220 bucks. Uh. There's the Call of Duty, <laughs> uh, oh. Western Digital. Oh my God. It comes preloaded with 2,400 COD points. Right? No, I'm good on that. Jay, that'll get you two battle passes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Jay said, fuck Activision. Yeah. And for those that are wondering why, we can get into that now. So if you watched our show on Wednesday you know that we talked a little bit about the Activision Blizzard scandal, I guess, for lack of a better term. Um, Controversy. Ch yeah, check out this segment. Blunder. <laughs> we just kind of jumped. Proportions. Well, I mean, I, it shouldn't even be a controversy. It should just be a fucking fuck up. Um, but yeah, it, go back watch listen to the show for more detail but basically it was brought to light that there's been ongoing investigations at activision blizzard for sexual harassment of both females and males in the company um mm -hmm. and that the company was basically just sweeping it under the rug and saying that oh these are false allegations they even went as far as whenever this allegation came out in this i don't know if it, it this suit came out you know, which is coming from the state of California. It's not just some ragtag group of lawyers. It's the state of California bringing the charges against them. And, you know, I'm not a big fan of any state, especially California. Right. But when the state's going after somebody, they don't like to lose. No. Um, but, you know, they brought forth these allegations, and Activision originally came out and said, oh, these are unfounded false allegations. And then they kind of backpedaled a little bit and went, well, you know, I mean, we'll look into it, but, you know, we think that this is just tarnishing our reputation to where they are now, 
with employees that walked out on Wednesday. And now it's going to be like, we're sorry, guys. Please speak up if something happens. And they did do that. Speak out. They did do that, you know. After the fact. After the fact. After they sat there and put their foot in their mouth going, these are baseless allegations because they had to step in front of that investor team like fucking Piccolo does Gohan. Right. <laughs> um, you know, and, and basically they, they came out and, you know, they said, oh, every voice matters and we will do a better job of listening now and in the future. You know, we're, our, our initial responses to the issues we faced together were quite frankly tone deaf. Well, no shit. You were trying to like save face. You're you're the you're yeah. the assholes that did this. Um, so in that there, a former Blizzard employee and Undead Labs founder, as well as a Arena Net co-founder, called for you know the unionization in game the gaming industry. Um, Jeff Strain, you know, who worked with Blizzard from '96 to '98. And he actually left Blizzard in 98 due to some stuff in Diablo um, where there was, like, impaled female body parts is what he said. Um, well, uh, the, uh, uh, all right. So let me let me just say Diablo set in a, a demonic time. You know right. what I mean? Isn't it sexist not to have mutilated body parts? Well, I mean... We don't know exactly what the meeting was over, but that's the whole reason he left because him and his wife didn't like where that was going. Oh, where? Well, I mean, it's his right not to, and it's his right to leave. Berserk Berserk is horrible. Yeah, but no, what what I'm saying is he left kind of in line with like what's going on now is that, you know, he didn't agree with something. He thought that something was taken too far. We don't even know what the exact allegations my, were. But my thing is, I, like, I read this article, right? And it seems more like he's just trying to dunk on Blizzard and get these brownie points See, more than uh, it is. Any, I don't, he I don't spun, think so. He could have speaked out back in, like, 98 and 2000. He could. What do you mean in 2000? He, he did speak out in 98 and said that that's the whole reason he left. I mean, Yeah, left, but, I mean, I didn't hear about it until just now. I mean, well, it's not a Well, that's the thing. St- like, even, even the research, you know, all the research from all the investigators only goes back and says that this kind of started in, like, the mid-2000s. So, I don't know. I kind of like this it guy. It started in the mid-2000s, then he wasn't there when it happened. Right, it was so he couldn't really have called it out. Like with a game that has demonic imagery. Right, so that's why I think it's okay that he he speaks out in it. Um, either way, he goes on and he says, you know, toxic is a word so frequently used in today that in some ways it has lost the true power and force of the word, which I agree with. Um, and he, you know, he just goes on to say that you know the Activision. Disclosure this week left him disgusted and repulsed, but not at all surprised. He said when he was at the early stages as a game programmer in 96, when there was only several dozen employees, he knew the founders and senior leadership well, had them over for dinners at his house, yada, yada, yada. Um, but, he, you know, he goes on and, and talks about how in his own studio, he tries to create... A healthier, more decent, more supportive environment, blah, 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 blah. But basically says that, you know, we need unionization. That unions were started in this country to protect the worst workers from abusive, cruel, and abhorrent, unacceptable, illegal treatment. And as a union guy myself, I mean, yeah, that's... What, what? I mean, I can understand that, but there are some times that unions protect people that don't need protection. Well, that that's, that's one of the blanket coverages of a union. Yeah, I agree that sometimes unions protect people that shouldn't or necessarily need protected. But and unions also do something where you still have to pay union dues even if you're not you don't want to be a member. Yes and no. I mean you still have to pay for something that you're not getting. Well, nine times out of ten, well, actually ten times out of ten, if you say, hey, I don't want to be a part of the union, they go, okay, well, then you're fired. And you have yeah. no protection because at that point, you don't have, you you chose not to have any protection. Um, yeah, but ain't that a little wrong? No. 
that if you don't ha- if you choose not to have something because i mean most laws protect against like back in the day when unions were like more prevalent and needed we didn't have the the labor laws that we have now the reason why this shit is happening in california and the lawsuit in general with activision blizzard is because they broke the law by discrimination sexual harassment all the stuff that was already on the books yeah the unions were you know trying to fight back in the day i'm not against unions i just there's some jobs that do need unionized some jobs that don't and it's it varies yeah i agree there you can't have unions everywhere i agree with the idea of it they need protection but there's already protection in laws it's just our criminal justice systems that's fucked well and and here's the thing with that what they're saying though is you know if you if you had a union in this situation you had this company go out and say hey we're going to do this this or that and then they didn't follow through with it and that's what's going on with the ubisoft yeah but what if you have someone that's that's a high ranking member of the union that does something fucked up it's just going to be the same shit that happens with police and churches and all that. They just move you to a different parish and move you to a different. Well, then there's no, there's area. no, then there is no way to fix any of this. I mean, there is. No, there's not it. because, because it's if there's teaching people not to be fucking assholes is one. Well, I mean, <laughs> it, that, that should have been ingrained into basic, <laughs> the basic teachings anyways. Um, yeah. But no, I mean, basically, what then it, anybody could do it, and if if the the owner of the company is a asshole like that, then he doesn't give a fuck, then it's never going to get fixed. And there's no way there's no way to now? fix this. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like you know, if you if you want to say, well, the unions are just going to do this shit too, then no, there's there's a way to fix it, and that's the employees finding jobs at companies that are going to treat them right. And I mean, if if this works, I mean, the thing is, is we don't need a mass unionization. We need different groups and companies to try their variation of unionizing to figure out what would work and if it does work. You know, there, I I don't agree with people going. We need widespread this. He's like, I I want to have my people like even in this. He's like, I uh, I implore people in my company to unionize. Okay, well then start the union. As a business owner, you cannot start a union. Well, you can help, like get it started, can't you? Like get nope. the right people that needs to. Nope. Mm. The employees have to do that themselves. Otherwise, you are undermining the union's. I don't want to say authority, uh, but undermining the union because then the employees can go well you put the union together so you're just running the union anyways you know so then they they don't have the actual confidence in the union that's why the employees have to go through and set it up and meet with the union representation to get the union in place in the first place okay well either way there there needs to be like trial efforts you can't you can't monopolize the whole unionize everything for gaming because it might some companies might not have that issue and it actually might make well, it harder for them to function. Well, I don't I don't think he's saying that, you know, oh, hey, look, every company necessarily needs a union because like you can be a manufacturing company and not have not be a US steel union. I mean, this this the article doesn't say anything about like um it being selective. It just says we need unionization. It is it's talking about the whole industry in general. Well, see that, I mean, that's just like saying, well, you know, steel workers need unionization. So, yeah, I mean, not every manufacturing company needs it, but as a whole, overall, most of them do because manufacturing own, company owners are assholes. And I think that that series, that same statement like that, you know, not necessarily every single gaming company needs unionization but the big ones like blizzard ubisoft obviously and then you know other ones do need it whereas the small studios like his probably don't need it well i mean hey i wouldn't say he's a small studio he's an xbox studio because he does state of decay that's what his that's what his company is known for. I right. Like looked him up a little bit. There's not much on him, but he did do State of Decay. And Another what... thing we have to look at with unionizing the gaming industry. Think of how much the price will go up for things. 
and the time to get things done. Yeah, there's not really going to be any incentive. So hold on. What you're saying, what your argument here is, is that, oh, you know, this shit's going to just take longer. Meanwhile, one of the biggest complaints and that we've bitched about, too, is crunch. I crunch really happens. Bitched. Crunch yeah. happens in the job field. Bro. Especially. I understand it. All job fields. I understand. I deal with it. I deal with it on a monthly basis. I deal with it on a, a monthly basis as well. You know, if I don't fix something that's leaking into the environment, we get fined. I understand that. But at the same time, they're going through and saying, hey, you know, you, you got to you, you can't be working people 24 seven. And me personally, part of a union, part of that shit. I work 16 hour shifts multiple times a week to be able to meet the demands. But at the same time, you know, everybody in the industry is saying this isn't right. That isn't right. This isn't right. And nothing's getting done. So there needs to be an outside company to step in or an outside source to step in and go, hey, this is what's fucked up. If you keep doing this, you're going to get fined. The government obviously isn't doing that. So the only way to do that is by bringing in what would be a union. Now, everybody's sense of a union is the steelworkers union. That's what everybody thinks of a union. That's what they think of, you know, and, and the strike busters and all this other no, shit that goes into I, it. I come from I come from a family of many different unions, electrical unions, construction unions, masonry unions. Right. Which is all teachers follows, unions, police unions. Well, teachers unions are actually nine times out of ten steelworkers unions, along with nurses, allied health workers, uh, a lot of automotive fields, the rubber and paper manufacturing companies. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot and, of unions. But there's also a lot of jobs that don't have unions that also function just as just as fine, if not better or worse. I mean, it, it varies. It, everything is different for everyone. And, you know, with you saying... Well, the, the the electrical unions and all that, they still follow the same basic principles of the heavy industry unions. But there's other unions as well that don't deal with the same shit that the the, the steel workers union. Uh, how do I want to put that? I don't want to say motto, but theory. You know, they my, they my thinking just on on any type of group grouping essentially and you giving power to, to certain people is just the room for corruption because you well, know but no you, matter what without a doubt you can have because let's look at let's look at the teachers people. unions yeah like and rob this is the... something you have to deal with too we have the teachers unions they're off during the summer they're off during the summer but yet we've had to weave weeks of them having personal time during the school year not only that Taxes have gone up to pay for these things. I have to personally contribute to school supplies in these schools. And you, these teachers are still getting paid during the summers. I mean, some up here, you don't. Uh, I was going to say uh, teacher. oh, teachers, you, te teachers unions are a mob here in Pittsburgh. Here, here you'll, in get like, you'll get that like that might be that like might be Pittsburgh and the pay. That must, that must right. be a, a pit in the city thing because that isn't the way it is out here at all. Yeah, here it's you. You don't get paid. There's teachers that work, the only that teachers that get paid. Jobs. The only teachers that get paid out here during the summer are the teachers that do summer school. Yeah, the only teachers yeah. here that don't have to work during the summer are the ones that have already paid off their debt and they're just you know they can work during the school year because they make enough money. Because I mean, the average teacher pay here is like around thirty some k. Uh, a lot so, of the teachers here greatest, but... they they go on they they go on work uh, unemployment okay. during the summer. You you guys are also smaller areas. Don't 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 look like that, Rob. Okay. Don't don't even try to contribute your school numbers to Pittsburgh, or try to compare them. Pittsburgh is vastly larger. Granted, yes, but I also have a, a you know school system that's not the smallest. I mean, it, every there's it is, two, ma it two is, major middle schools that funnel into a high school, and every year it's like a the the highest graduating class number. It is absolutely now. just ridiculous, but we've gotten far from what we were talking about with the gaming right. unions. Looking into it, Rob, they're saying the average cost is a 30% increase in operating expenses when you add a union. 
Do you really think those devs are going to eat that? Or do you think they're going to send it down the line to the game? Or okay, the people well, who buy the games. Well, then how do we fix this? How well, would you fix off, this? There's a lot of shit in gaming regardless. So let's start with, with the basics. I mean, it, it's such a greedy money soaked feel that that it is you know with microtransactions and the investors that have to be appeased in order for a game to come out i mean there's a lot of factors to this well, you guys already said it well jay mainly you said it just leave the studio okay so well, so hold on gonna, hold on I, I, so I, so where are the where are these developers going to go now where are these these game developers going to go what studio they're going to we have small studios popping up we just talked about one a couple days ago on wednesday they have mass listings right now. Yeah. They're hiring. Yeah, you're right. They're, they're hiring about 75 people. Activision Blizzard employs over 5,000 people. So let's just say Blizzard shuts, shuts down tomorrow. Okay. So, so now there's 4,900 people out of work. And no. Because as we've seen with the recent walkout... You said yourself, roughly 5,000 Blizzard employees. Do you know how many people actually participated in the walkout? 350. Yes. And it wasn't only like 100 and some of them. But like that's not what I'm saying. Just... What I'm saying is, you know, we're talking about how to fix this. And you're saying, well, leave and go to another company. I'm not saying that that wasn't exactly what I was saying. It was there's different options out there. Well, no, that's what I said. And yeah, yeah I'm a firm believer. It, this is tricky, and as I said, How, the one answer for if, some that's right for some isn't right for others. If out of those 5,000 people, only 130 of them actually walked out, of those people still inside, if they still think it's that toxic to work there but they stay there, well, that's on them. I don't know. Even I, after the company came out and said, you well, anybody who participates... Do this. Anybody oh, no, 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 no. See, see that's still getting paid time off. That, they said that after the walkout. They didn't say that before it. I heard it before. No. It, they, I, was talk, I was talking to somebody that I said, or uh, my buddy. Uh, because we didn't, even, we didn't even we didn't even know the walkout was happening until Tuesday, and it happened on Wednesday. And yeah, then, and, and then I mentioned it to my buddy Wednesday. I said, hey, you ready for this Blizzard walkout? He's like, yeah, they're getting paid for it. He already read that they were getting paid. Yeah, they came out somebody. after they already walked out, decided they were doing the walkout, and walked out and Blizzard's like hey we'll pay you i i thought they after the news of the walkout they said they're going to pay because it looks bad on them if they don't no they did it like as they were walking out hey we'll pay you but still though i mean that more people should have walked out i mean i don't if disagree really if it really is that bad there at blizzard activision <laughs> Well, the, here's the problem, too. The, well, the if it's not issue, that bad, let's just play Warzone our, on Wednesday. Our, well, that's what I'm saying. Our issues with this company, we drop out. There's three people right here, right? There's three new hackers that are adding to that new player account. The new player account's always changing, which looks good to investors because it, set, it shows that more people are joining. But the Warzone fucking hacking issue is so bad at this point. There's no reason to play Warzone. Well, yeah. well, I mean, no... Not not many people are taking it this seriously anyways, because it's Sunday morning at 1024 a.m. And Warzone already has over 75,000 viewers. Yeah, oh, I agree. And that's that's up almost 50,000 viewers compared to almost two hours ago when I checked before. Right. World of Warcraft on a Sunday morning. Currently has over 36,000 viewers. Well, see, that's the thing. You have all these people that say they'll do something and then won't actually do it. That's my thing. That's why I don't like virtue signaling. Because you use those people that have virtue signaling are the same ones that are going back and playing fucking Warzone right now. Like, no, I'm actually not adding to the player count. I'm I'm waiting to, to hear something more. But at this point, I'm about to delete Black Ops off off there too and diablo and i love diablo and i was excited for diablo 2 remastered and diablo 4 i ain't so excited now and i said if all the allegations are true because again these are just allegations you know they have to be able to prove it in a court of law 
which I'm but, pretty sure a lot of these can't be proven. Yeah, I mean, there was over 3,000 people that signed an open letter to uh, the, you know, fucking company going, yeah, you fucked up. Well, I mean, we, we already had proof about, and they didn't say anything, you know, necessarily happened, but the Cosby suite that we talked about on Wednesday. Um, yeah, that, that just seemed to me like more of a bad it's just joke. bad taste, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I agree with that 100%. Um, but between that, between the the woman that ended up committing suicide and everybody going, yeah, there was shit that was being passed around of pictures and stuff, you know, it's like they, they can prove that a lot of this shit actually happened. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. And it, I don't think Cal- the state of California of the- would go after that's why I, if they I, couldn't I, prove I, it. Doing my protest, I wouldn't say protest. I shouldn't say protest because fuck, I hate activism. Uh, <laughs> activism against Activision. Yeah, I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. There's so many people that have hashtag activists, and I'm like, shut up! You're just a weirdo with a Twitter. <laughs> oh. But while we're talking about that and the Ubisoft thing as well, CEO of Ubisoft responded to the employee letter that came out Wednesday. And, you know, in his letter, he goes on to say that, you know, they've made important progress over the past year. They've implemented all this stuff. Um, You know, there's... Didn't we have somebody say that that's a fucking lie? Well, I mean, that's what (laughs) that's what the open letter said, you know, that, hey, look, you guys aren't doing this shit. Yeah. Um. But they, they, you know, they go on to say, you know, we reviewed this letter and the we take the issues it raises seriously. Um, yesterday's letter expresses concern, which this was on Thursday, from employees who want to make Ubisoft a better place. We have heard f- clearly from this letter that not everyone is confident in the process that has been in place to manage misconduct reports. Um, they are currently recruiting a new VP Global Employees Relations position. Um, you know, they said last year they launched 300 listening sessions with 1500 plus team members, which they came out and they said, you know, some of these were just used to, uh, basically put people on a hit list. Mm. Um, but they said, you can expect another update in Q3, including the next steps on our values projects, our D and I and our HR roadmap. So. It'll be interesting to see, you know, what what actually comes from it. Um, mm. it. If you guys are done talking about that, I'm going to say this to close it out. Okay. Uh huh. If you're if you're working at these companies just for the sake of working there because it's what you want to do but you know it's a toxic area, you know it's bad, you're going to grow to hate what you've came into out of love. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes, you can leave. There are other jobs you can take that not necessarily in that field, but guess what? It'll hold you over until you find what you're looking for or until you can make necessary measures like, we've seen these other companies do where they leave and open their own studios. But if you stay in this field with as toxic and as bad as it is, just for the sake of wanting to work in it, you're going to grow to hate it. It's then going to consumer. stay toxic. Look at, look at all the, uh, <clears throat> the people that are, you know, against us gamers. Yes. The, you can take another job short term. I don't know. I don't know if that's even the best thing to say. It's this is all fucking tricky and complicated. It is, but guess what? If you stay at these, like with like we said with Blizzard, well, these people need punished first and foremost. But the people that didn't participate, even though they think that it's a completely toxic, unworkable place, and they stayed in there, they didn't voice their concerns and. And Rob, I know what you're thinking about the unionization of whole thing, but let's look at the plant you worked at before. How many times did you complain about how toxic it was, about how 
your union higher up was using family ties to force union meetings at family owned restaurants just to line his family's pockets. And what did they do to you as the result of you voicing their toxic behavior? They canned your ass. And then the union didn't even step in and defend you. You're right. Yeah. So that that's my whole thing. Unions not, aren't necessarily protecting all the time either. Oh, I don't disagree <clears throat> with that. But I've also seen in that same union that I got fucked over, and, and I've seen them help guys not get fucked over. And, and you know what? I'm okay with me getting fucked over, and it's 100% true. And I will say this, and it, that's why I'm still part of the Steelworkers Union. If a majority of the people stop getting fucked over, and a couple of people still get fucked over, that's what that's what's going to happen. Yeah, but the needs of the few outweigh the needs of many. The needs of many (laughs) outweigh the needs of few is what I'm saying. I've got that backwards. You know, (laughs) but that's just my feeling on it. And you know what? And here's the thing, you know, yeah, the the union did, you know, go to local restaurants and stuff to have the union meetings so that they got the money rather than going to a big corporate place so that the corporate place got the money. They helped out a little guy. Even if they are family ties, I'm okay with that, honestly. Was it really, though, when it was a mandatory that you had to buy this and you had to have this? Uh, Nothing was mandatory. Okay. I I remember you telling me that that we have to buy our own tools. So, I mean... There's a lot of mandatory shit we have. Well, I just meant when they had their union meetings at that restaurant, guys like had to buy a minimum of something. We never had that. No? No. All right. No, I mean um it I mean it was it was a, a club, like a sportsman's club. Um and they kind of pushed, you know, hey, you should become a member here, but it wasn't required. You got in because you knew knew somebody type shit. Well, no, I mean the well, union just because they the were a there. union, yeah. And and a lot of guys were members there. But my feel is if I think if they unionize the whole gaming industry, we're going to see a big jump in prices on these games and stuff. Well, here's here, and here's why here's why I disagree um, with that. Well, hold on, it's if. If you're choosing to work in the gaming industry, even though you've grown to hate it and you're not doing anything just because you want to work on games, you're not doing yourself any favors. You're not doing yourself any good. I mean, yeah, I I agree with that, too. But, yeah, I mean, if, if, you know, you hate it that much, then get out of it. Or figure out how to continue to do what you want to do without you know because that's why that's why that's why i left the automotive industry because i grew to hate it i really did i i hated going to work every day i hated doing the shit that we did every day you know and you can't lie to me brian and say that you haven't said that you've hated it at times too oh i do you know and that you want to get out of it but that's like you know me saying well brian if you hate it so much just make this your full-time thing Find another job to to c- hold you over until we can make this our full time thing. If you hate it that much, find me a job that pays as much as they exactly. do. Exactly, that's what I'm talking about right there. So these people that you're saying to leave these companies and go to small studios, how are they going to one create a studio or two compete with the wages and other benefits that come with working at a big studio? That's yeah, what not, I was getting. Not at. to mention, what if you get blacklisted? Okay, but there's not mass sexual harassment going on in my job either. But in the automotive industry, automotive industry as a whole, there is. Yeah. And that's what we're. That, I mean, that's what we're comparing here. That, is the that whole that industry and shit at my job. I, unfortunately, it was sexual harassment that that caused everything to happen. Whether she wanted to be sexually harassed, or not, I can't say that. That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you talking about that girl that yeah, left? Yeah, the only fan shit. Yeah. yeah. No, no, regardless, she wanted to be sexually oogled, I should say. She wanted right. to be seen. That, that, that's the word. Don't don't cancel me, guys. <laughs> I, I haven't even just started yet. I haven't even said the most offensive <laughs> shit yet. <laughs> but, but no, like, so, like, it, let that whole situation, 
you know, she was by ter- by definition sexually harassed. Right. And it, nothing was really said. It pretty much blew up to a point where they got a BuzzFeed article wrote about it and everybody lost their fucking shit over it. Everybody was claimed as misogynistic, even though this was literally a couple of people that did it. Right. Not the whole shop. I didn't give a shit about seeing her naked. A lot of other people I knew didn't give a shit about seeing her naked, but some people did. And those ones were the ones that decided to act stupid with it. Right. Yeah. But you know, it's going to be fun to edit. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I might just put it out raw. Oh, God. We're raw dogging it. Oh, yeah. You know, and that's the thing, like, and that, that's what works great about us as a whole, is even though we have conflicting opinions on stuff, we still respect each other enough to have these conversations and respect each other's opinions. You know, I don't know that that remains to be seen after this episode, Rob. No, Jay, Jay, Jay and I aren't exactly looking all pro union, so you might get all mad and hang up I'm after the show. No, I'm not. I'm not, not at all in the sense of like, I just, there's never a one size fits all solution to these issues and it needs to be. And I agree. And that's the thing that like yeah. I, I, I was going to say earlier was, you know, I, I, there's no way that every company is going to unionize. Mm-hmm. There's no need for every company to unionize. Um, I think that a, a unionized type of, of structure might not be bad. And that's the thing, like the workers could get together and make their own union. But the big thing too, about this is this isn't like a physical labor field where your body's getting destroyed, making these video games. This is a mental, mental strain. And this is a job. That's also a meritocracy. Any tech job is a meritocracy. Whatever you build product wise is what gets your name out there. Like Hideo Kojima. Right. For example, he's known as one of the great directors because he put out good products. Yeah. But look at how mistreated he was. And look what happened. You know, he took that shit, no. got got his legend status and went, bye, bitches. But yeah, that's the thing is he already had his legend status at that point, you know. <laughs> um, But like maybe you're going to take a lot of shit is what I'm saying. You oh, gotta yeah. Take a lot of shit to get to a point where you you are financially and. Well, and the other thing, the other thing with that too, you know, let let's say you know, there's even 500 people that leave Blizzard and Activision and all that. How many other developers do you know of that have left a company like that and made it big? Other than Kojima, okay. We, I mean, it's the same thing in this field. How many streamers? I agree 100. percent I agree 100. percent But I'm just saying, like, I, I mean. It, it, like I said, Brent, it would be like you saying, you know, well, you know what? There's sexual harassment and, and all this other stuff that goes on in the automotive industry. So because they're not taking a stand, I'm going to leave. You know what I mean? Like, it, it just... Well, it, like they said, they had over 300 people sign the letter. No, they had over, the, uh, over 3,000 3, sign the letter. Yeah, it was, was it? and because former of- employees. Yeah. Okay. Then it must have been a mistype in the article I read, because they were saying over three hundred signed the letter. Oh no, there was Blizzard. That might have been the start because three hundred and fifty people walked out. Upwards of three hundred fifty people lined the sidewalks on either side of the headquarters main entrance, holding signs and chanting. Um, Employees wore Blizzard shirts and other. They did over three hundred at the walkout. But and only what a hundred something actually worked there. The right? the walkout takes place at two days after thirty one hundred Activision Blizzard employees signed an open letter. Ugh. So I mean, it doesn't say how many were actually employees in this article. Of the how many people signed? No, no, no. Uh, uh, how many people were outside of the building? Oh. It's, it says, you know, 350 people lined the sidewalks on either side of the headquarters main entrance, holding signs and chanting. Employees wore blizzard shirts and other gear, some bringing family and friends alongside them. God, it's so bad that, like, now that any time I hear somebody was protesting, I'm like, he will not divide us, in my head, because that's stupid bullshit. 
You know what I think of? I think of when me and Brendan were kids and we were down on the sidewalk screaming, no coke, too much smoke. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> we, yeah. were like, we were like 10, 12 years old and they were putting in a new plant and we were protesting it just to protest. I mean, I was punk anti-establishment and I that's still technically we, am because that's, 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 we that's why I gravitated my political views to where they are, but geez, <laughs> man, nothing in this world works. Yeah, mm. it's it is it's a hard thing to it is a hard thing to do. And, you know, I'm not necessarily saying like the traditional sense of a union is the answer. But I do no, think and I think that's the problem, Rob, like you pointed out, everybody's looking at the steelworker model of a union. Yeah, the traditional of sense of a union and the tech side. You know, there's not very many. I don't I don't know of a, a union in the tech industry, but developers for not only just video games but software and programming and all that stuff you know I, the the crunch is real the the hold on it's it's going to be uh capable understanding uh intelligence with an n uh tech people that's one word or cunt people <laughs> so it it looks like there it looks like there is one Okay. Uh, communications workers of America. Okay. Uh, um, from their website, it says represents working people in telecommunications, customer uh, service, media, airlines, healthcare, public service. I know it's more of a broad term, but I mean, technically, gaming is telecommunications. It, yeah, media. <laughs> the Communication Workers of America's headquarters is located in Canada. Makes sense. <laughs> what? Wow, uh, an American union is based in a can. Okay, <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah, I mean, it. that makes sense. I, 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 this is America. People, it makes a lot people, of sense. People fail to realize that you know, U.S., Canada, and Mexico are North America. Thank you. I'm here all night. <laughs> so technically, it is an American company. <laughs> Touche. Touche. Um, but there's no Mexican, so <laughs> build that wall. <laughs> I was making a joke yesterday about like we should have walls on our, on our borders, and <laughs> it brought up snow Mexicans, and now this shit's stuck oh, in my head. Just wall off America. Just it's a prison, anyways. <laughs> so apparently, there is a group that is trying to become a union for video game workers. Yeah, but it's still just an idea at this point. They probably haven't met, like you said, the the signature requirement or thresholds and shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, they threshold said of workers and. They said a lot of it had to do with COVID, which, I mean, does make sense if you can't get... I'm so tired of that excuse. Yeah, but they, they started the form this last year, and they couldn't meet with the people they needed to meet with, and they couldn't get the paperwork they needed to work with. Well, I'm tired of COVID, guys. I don't want to die. I don't want the jab. <laughs> The Game Workers Unite is the name of the industry, or the the union. Join a game union. Oh, so they are a union in the UK, Ireland, France, Finland, Scotland, and France again. Um, Gamers Workers Unite is not a union within itself. We just help unionize game workers. So... So, it's the company that all these need to, these people need to go through. It's what I'm hearing. Yeah, to start unions in the United right. States if it needs to be. Which I mean, like I said, it it kind of seems like it needs to be. And yeah, like you were saying, Brent, just a union in a non traditional sense. You know, whether what what that may be, what that may look like, I don't know. So I mean, hopefully, yeah. no hammers and sickles, but. That's just <laughs> no, God no. We have we have enough of that stuff spray painted around Pittsburgh. 
2017 workers. I'm an anarcho communist. That makes no sense. So, moving on to our last topic after we've ranted for like 45 minutes on this. (laughs) And not about communism. Imagine that, too. Right. And this is one that we kind of, again, have disagreeing opinions on. Um, so Scarlett Johansson recently is, launched a suit against Disney due to a contract confliction. Oh man, it was good having Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, here's the yeah. thing, like, she was done anyways, like, that was her last movie for that anyways, unless they really wanted to reboot. No, she was supposed to be in, like, cameos and things like that nature. Yeah, but like, I mean... Yeah, I, well, I mean, like, we can't even say the What If series, because it's animated. Right. What if she did not take a swan dive? Oh! <laughs> I mean, if voice actress, I mean, I don't know how good Scarlett Johansson would be at voice acting, but... um, But basically... Uh, so, for... Oh, okay, so you were getting over it. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, so basically the suit that ScarJo launched against Disney says that they violated her contract by bringing Black Widow to Disney Plus same day as theaters. Um, and, you know, in her contract, uh, the I we obviously don't know exactly the wording of her contract, but, you know, her lawyer says that she makes a lot of money from the theatrical release of it and the back end of it. You know, like how well it does in the box office is how much money she gets. She has a royalty percentage. It, it, they didn't yeah. say that, though. That isn't what the lawyer said. <laughs> um, well, he's trying to claim she's losing money. That's that's the basis for any lawsuit. Right. Well, that's why that's why he won't use the word. Roy- I'm sure that's why he won't use the word royalty. Yeah, it's probably something else like she gets a bonus or something for how well the movie does. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. a performance bonus. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, so the studio really, oh, uh, uh, wow, this is like a completely different article than I wanted. Wow, this like doesn't go through and give anything that I, I fucking want. All I just want is like the article that I had that had the initial information on the suit. <laughs> on Scar Joe's? Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'm sure a lot of it has been pulled down. There we go. Um, so yeah, she Scarlett Johansson has filed a lawsuit over the film's release of Dis uh, film's release on Disney Plus. Um, a new report claims that Johansson filed the lawsuit in L.A. Superior Court today, alleging that Disney breached her contract for Black Widow when it released the film both in theaters on Disney and on Disney Plus premiere. Um, the statement from the suit alleges that Disney intentionally induced Marvel's breach of the agreement without justification in order to prevent Ms. Johansson from realizing the full benefit of her bargain with Marvel. I mean, this was something that Ooh, she made Disney back in- screwed someone who didn't know that was going to happen. Right. This was this agreement was also made back in 2017 when they decided to do Black Widow. Well, in Disney, you know, trying to be PC they, with the whole COVID shit, you know, they started release and Marvel or uh, Disney and Marvel started releasing stuff. Sh- Strictly to streaming platforms, so that, because theaters were closed, you couldn't go to a movie theater. Yeah. I mean, that's how Mulan released, and that tanked. But, um, you know, there's been there's been a couple movies that have have released that way. Um, and and the thing like the the thing that bothers me about this whole thing is she knew months ago that that's how this was going to work out why not file a suit then yeah do you know why money she didn't know how well the movie was going to do nobody did you 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 can assume but you know nobody did 
But why? Why yep. wait? And as you pointed out, Rob, Disney did make her a counter offer. They right. offered her a, 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 a new deal, whereas I'm sure it would be less of a payout, but I'm sure it would have been more of a consistent. Right. I mean, to be fair, Black Widow has had a budget of two hundred million, and it made back globally three fourteen million. So, and, and the thing with that, Black Widow made two hundred eighteen million on opening weekend. And Disney is claiming that sixty million of that came from Disney Plus. <clears throat> so a little more than a quarter of it came from Disney Plus. I mean, I think people should have the option. If people want to watch something, they're going to either pay that extraordinarily, extraordinarily stupid high cost of thirty dollar early access to watch it at home, or they're going to go to the movie theater. Having both options out there. It's just getting more money and boosting the actual sales of the movie. Well, before you even go into DVD production, DVD and Blu-ray production. I Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I agree with that 100%. Um, but like I said, the, my biggest thing on this is, one, that they tried to offer her a solution to this, and she said no. Um, I read on one of these articles, and I don't know, I've read probably 15 articles on this today alone. Um, it said that, you know, she's made over $25 million from Black Widow already. And that she is... Is is that playing the character, or is that on this movie? On this alone? movie. On this movie alone. On Black Widow so, movie alone. So this isn't including all of her Iron Man cameos, Avenger cameos, None of that. Uh, roles. That's just off of this movie. So I'm gonna go. Ahead, I'm gonna say this, and there, without knowing the full details of it. Well, she, she she wanted she wanted all the reward with no risk, right? Mm -hmm. And so she's just playing the same thing that the USA Women's she, Soccer Team did. She's pissed she didn't get a chunk of the ticket sales, essentially. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Well, she did get and, she did get the chunk of ticket sales. She got, but a quarter of the profit made off of the movie was through Disney Plus. Now, like I said, we don't know what the terms of the renegotiation of her contract were for Disney Plus. Um, and, you know, Disney's response to it was was kind of uh, kind of funny. <laughs> you know, they, they, they came out and they, they said, you know, there's no merit whatsoever to this filing. The lawsuit is especially sad and distressing in its callous disregard for the horrific and prolonged global effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Disney has fully complied with... Hold on. Disney has fully complied with Miss Johansson's contract and furthermore, the release of Black Widow on Disney+. Plus, uh, with Premier Access, has significantly enhanced her ability to earn an additional compensation of the $20 million she has received on Black Widow to date. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, I don't know. This is just ridiculous when it comes down to it. You well, know, here's the thing. They keep releasing this stuff. They keep releasing this stuff, but they're not, we don't see what, what is actually in the contract, what percentages right. of royalties or performance or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So now they're just out here causing mass confusion on this whole thing. And quite honestly, like you said, Rob, I agree with you. It just makes her look bad. It does. To me, it really does make her look bad. It makes her look like she's only about the money. Um, and like I said, I mean, I get it. Yeah, you, your contract states one thing. But at the same time, I, I don't know. To me, it's like, like I said, she's, she's money hungry. Like you said, she wanted all the reward with none of the risk. Yeah. That's then, exactly what she wanted. I mean, she's been just trying to get in the news lately. Like, it's it's not even like because what, what were we talking about last last couple weeks? She's pissed off that Black Widow was sexy. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, she's trashing guys because we looked at her like a sex icon. And you know, I didn't look at her as a sex icon. I thought she was fucking sexy because it's Scarlett Johansson, right? But 
you know, that's kind of the role she was playing. She was a spy, a Russian spy. Yeah. Operation Honeypot. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't get like you took th- this is the problem with all these actors. You took the job not knowing what the character is, and then you're trying to morph the character into what your definition of what's trendy and, you know, and activism stands. Right. Um, well, and, and while we're talking about this, you know, Emma Stone is also weighing options on her Disney release with Corella. <laughs> well, I mean, let, let's be honest here. That movie didn't do great. Did it? I don't know. I don't um, know anybody I, that was, probably- I really don't think that movie did all that great. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know what the numbers are. Um, uh, Seven point four on IMDb, seventy four percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and a fifty nine percent on Metacritic. Yeah, but what did what was its money? Like, what did it bring in? Well, okay, yeah, production. I had a one million dollar or a hundred million dollar budget. Uh, as of July sixth, it was uh, two hundred million in a box off box office earnings. Okay, so it's not that far behind Black Widow. Emma Stone doesn't have the same reputation as Scarlett Johansson does. Not anymore. I mean, maybe yeah. maybe ten years ago. Well, yeah, when she was still doing smaller coming of age, right comedy movies. You know, um, like what was that one she did, the Scarlet Letter? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, Easy A. Yeah, there was Easy A. There uh, she was in Super Bad, Zombie Land. Uh, both both Zombie La La Land. La La Land did really good. Oh fuck that movie. <laughs> well, I don't. It's not my cup of tea, but it won a bunch of fucking awards, Brain. Now respect the award show. Here's the thing, though, like. <laughs> <laughs> Co- Co- they're all pedophiles anyways right. <laughs> Corella didn't make much money in Disney Plus Rob you need to clip that so we can promo that for this, this right. release <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the shot at Hollywood <laughs> and now and now there's talk Gerard Butler's doing it for what he, Gerard Butler sues over Olympus has fallen royalties this article was published July 30th by Adam Barnhart. So are we seeing actors rise up? Wait a second. Wait a second. I don't want to hear it. I don't. There I are... don't. These actors and actresses are so overpaid. You know who we love that doesn't he, get? He, he who, filed who... a $10 million lawsuit to try to get like probably about that much money. Well, yeah, he's in uh, the suit alleges Butler's owed at least $10 million uh, from the producers of the film after it grossed nearly $170 oh. million globally. Well, you know what? No, this here, this here is all right. I understand it. Hey, you know, I'm supposed to make so much money off this and I'm not. All right. I get that. But like to me, the, the ScarJo thing is like her and, and if Emma Stone does it or whoever – um, to me, that's like, hey, look, this made a bunch of money, and I want some of that, even though my contract, oh. even though you tried to offer me stuff on this. This here seems like it was, hey, look, you know, in my contract, you guys said that you're going to pay me this. Based on how well it does, yeah. And you didn't pay no, this. No, 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 no. The, on comicbook.com, where I found this article about Gerard Butler... It is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven paragraphs, okay? Mm-hmm. They talk about Butler for two of those paragraphs. Okay. The other five paragraphs go back to Scarlett Johansson. Well, that's because it's comic book, and they got to talk about Black Widow, and, you know, Olympus has fallen. It has nothing to do with comic books. Hey. It's, fuck, it's fucking bait and switch. That is, that is bait and switch. Yeah. Holy crap. Was it written by Kevin Smith? 
<laughs> oh my god, dude! Yeah. The the videos that have been coming about coming out about his constant complaining. Uh, apparently fair, he he had he'll, a he'll respond he was like. I'm going to stop making films. And I was like, no, that sucks. You're one of my favorite directors. Now I kind of wish that he would have fell through on that <laughs> fucking promise. It's better to burn out than fade away. Well, you know, what's funny is he kind of pointed it out himself. Um, in the Jane Silent Bob reboot. <laughs> yeah. um, what's his name? Oh, crap. He, he owns the comic book store. I Brody. 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 Yeah, I can't remember his real name. See, this I, is how invested I was in the Kevin Smith's fucking universe. I know exactly who you're talking about. He's like, in Hollywood, you fail upwards. Because apparently everybody just dogpiled him over Cop Out. <laughs> there was a lot of stuff like that. He just he, he decided he was going to make some like artsier movies. So he made, made Red State, which I thought Red State was a good movie. It was about basically the the Westboro Baptist Church if they decided they were going to kill people. And then, hey, don't shake your head. Westboro Baptist Church are a bunch of evil motherfuckers. Uh huh. But anyway, so he uh, he did that, and then he did Tusk, and then he did that horror film. Or no, that was his daughter, I think, Yogi Hosers. With Johnny Depp's daughter. Oh, I can't remember yeah, if he yeah, had yeah. anything to do oh, with Oh, yeah. But he said yeah. he was going to do that. And then he's like to doing Jay and Silent Bob. And now he's going to do Clerks 3. And now he's going to do... Um, or now he's doing He-Man. Like, this dude said he was going to retire way before this heart attack shit even happened. And now he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> Brent. Hmm. Jason Lee. Jason Lee. It just I came to me. You, I could have told you his name. I didn't hear that. You were trying to figure it out. I, I was trying to remember it. Yeah, yeah, because he said he couldn't remember. I, I, I recently went back and started watching My Name is Earl. Yeah. Oh, God. By the way, Ethan Slurpee is like a big dude now. Right? Like, he lost a lot of fucking oh, yeah. weight. And he is like healthy as shit now. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> But it's it's just this whole whole thing over so, all this. So do we? And and it's slightly mentioned here, um, that Emily Blunt, you know, it, it is watching Jungle Cruise numbers closely. Do you think The Rock's going to be the next one to sue Disney? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's 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 got that Moana two coming out. You can't really afford to 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 be stepping on Disney's toes. Yeah, right. Well, not to mention he's going to want to be included in the future Fast and Furious movies. That's not owned by Disney, is it? No, that's Universal. Yeah. No, but if he starts picking, poking, and suing hey, studios, hey, hey, Universal might pick up on it because they're like, hey, we <laughs> fucking hate Disney. So no, what they're going to do is they're going to go to to the meeting with the lawyers. He's going to look at him. He's like, the only thing stronger than this lawsuit is family. <laughs> we're we're talking about the rock, not uh Vin Diesel. Yeah. Sorry. Vin different, Diesel. different muscular yeah. bald guy that takes to uh steroids. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. Believe you you don't get more ripped the older you get. No. If if we get sued for slander, then I'd like to see the rock challenge me to a wrestling match. And me I'll too. Win. I'd like to see that. <laughs> I'll win. No, you won't. I'll try. I'll struggle. I'll struggle, struggle a snuggle. Lot. <laughs> Only with you. Well, I mean, listen. Hey. Uh, I'm not hey. going to say. Okay, so I was wrong, and I'm going to go back. She's made $20 million to date on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So $20 million all together. Yes. Okay. Why is that a problem? Mm-hmm. Well, and you know, there's a bunch of people that are saying, "Hey, this is a this is a, a sex issue again." Of I'm course they so are tired of this. Of course they are. Gender's such a social construct, but we keep fucking making people bad for their gender. Like I don't understand this shit. I'm over it. 
take me off this planet and I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> you know, the 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 whole gender pay gap thing, it's already been disproven. It's already been picked, pulled, and torn apart. <clears throat> yeah. I'm uh, I'm done hearing it. You you want to talk about the gender pay gap? Go go to the streaming world. Well, you want to see that? Yeah, right. No, that's the tit gap. Well, see, <laughs> I mean that's not entirely true though, because I have my own set, and I don't. You know, well, I don't. I don't wear deep V shirts either. So you need to. <laughs> Nobody wants to see this. I don't, everybody needs to see that. I'm I'm still like confused on how this is a sex sh- because it's a a, a gendered character attack because it's a woman. Don't argue with the woman. Well, okay, hold on. Who's her equal? Who, who's black Hawkeye? How much has Jeremy Renner made in the MCU? I don't know. Jeremy Renner. I mean, granted, he doesn't have his own movie, but. Yeah, he didn't get his own movie. He's still or a movie still with has, him and her in it, talking about the fucking uh, the, oh the running God. jokes that they were, kept talking about. Oh, Budapest. Budapest, yeah. They didn't. They yeah, about what about happened about in Budapest. Budapest. In Buda. <laughs> oh, they're saying he made about fifty million. So, I mean, she's made more. She's been in more movies. She's only made 20. Altogether? That's what it's saying, yeah. Like, completely. Yep. For Avengers, for Black Widow. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ooh. I I found a list on stylecaster.com. Okay. Uh da, 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 da. uh no, Johansson would have Oh, hold on. Hold on here. They're throwing out a lot of conflicting information here. Black Widow in 2020, 2021 15 million. Avengers Endgame 2019 15 million. So she uh, made fifteen million in Endgame alone. Yeah, you know what? That's what I was just looking at. There, yeah, that has to be just on Black Widow. Hold so on. Uh, Hold Avengers on Endgame, Jeremy Renner got paid the same amount, fifteen million. It. You're on Stylecaster, right? That's yeah, what you're on. Yeah, so uh, the person that made the most was Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, like completely. Cat made less money. The guy who played Cat made less money. Thor made less money. Ah, ah. Chris Evans, $15 million for Endgame. Chris Hemsworth, $15 million. <laughs> Wait a minute. You can't sit here and tell me that they all made $15 million for Endgame. Maybe. Except for no, Robert it's, Downey it's Jr. One point, it's $1.5 million. <clears throat> Yeah, they all made 1.5 million. Okay. Uh, Chris Evans, 1.5 million with a 50 million uh, net worth. Chris Hell well, on 1.5 with a 9 million. Style caster, it says 15, not one. Um, Scarlett Johansson, according Black Widow, and Avengers both were 1.5 million. Her net worth is 140 million. Okay. So this here, uh, this is according to uh, US Magazine. In a July 2021 statement from Disney, uh, a Disney statement shared that Lost in Translation actress Scarlett Johansson was, I don't know why I said that, was paid $20 million for Black Widow. So, yeah. So how can they say this is a gender issue when her male counterpart through the whole MCU made just as much as she did. Yeah. And she, well, her, she's worth more too. 
That's the thing. Like her, she's got a the only person that way or that has a bigger net worth than her is fucking Robert Downey Jr. And it's Robert Downey Jr. The only person to successfully pull off blackface. <laughs> oh God, I remember those articles. Yeah, yeah right. Like even even this even the stylecaster brings up Ro- Tropic Thunder and Voyage of Doctor Doolittle, which bombed. But he's also Sherlock Holmes. He was also in uh, Charlie Bartlett. Um. Robert Downey Jr. is just a damn good actor. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I keep seeing so many different. <clears throat> yeah, like Jay saying he's finding 1.5 million for the main I, Avengers. I cast. might be wrong. It's the it's the freaking typeface of this. I don't. I can't tell if it's a period or if it's an actual five. It looks like it's 1.5 million. But again, these people got they're making way more money than their standard people. That's what that's what gets me is they're well, not not, not to mention people. like their brand, they make money on their brand, their name. Right. They make money on appearances. They make money on merchandise sales. Action figures and shit like that, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, well, and here's the thing. So, like, this is according to Forbes. She made 14 million dollars up front. For Endgame alone. So 14 million right off the bat before before the movie even started. Before it was even projected how well it would do in the box office. She made 14 million. That's insane. Yeah. 14 million just to know Black Widow is going to be in the movie. Yeah. And I don't want to hear this anymore. And <laughs> um, where's this at? Because right, I just seen this. I think it said that she said. Oh, no, this is according to Forbes. The actress made the same pay as co-stars Chris Evan and Chris Pratt. So she didn't get paid any different? Hmm. Nope. So she made just as much as Cap and Star Lord. Mm-hmm. She made One's just as much as her, her male, her male counterpart, Hawkeye. <clears throat> yeah. They 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 they're not exactly viewed as the main in the main circle, but they're like supporting roles. They make cameos in other movies. No, they're they're Avengers. Let's be honest. They're Avengers. Well, I mean, Thor made that much. Hawkeye made that much. Cap uh, made that much. It seems like, yeah, just about everybody made $15 million. Except Robert Downey. Which he's he, he's got to be living an Iron Man life lifestyle. lifestyle. Um, yeah. Robert Downey Jr. doesn't have to work anymore. <laughs> right. You know what? None of these actors have to work anymore with the with the way they make money. Uh, well, think about it's, where they're it's, at and how much money they have to spend just to live there. Depending. Well, they're all leaving California anyways and going to Texas and stuff. Yeah, which I or think they're is finding hilarious. areas with lower taxes. Which I think is hilarious. We'll see how well that works if they try to bring their uh, so, idealistics to Texas. So they're making tens, possibly hundreds of thousands of dollars in appearance, in appearances. Right. You, uh, we don't know how much they get paid to be at like the big comic cons, like San Diego and stuff, or New York. And then they, and like we pointed out, it, it didn't even do that well on Disney plus premiere access. And she's trying to say that that hindered the progress well, no, of the movie. Well, no, that, that did do well. Corella didn't do well. Corella's the one that didn't do well. That pulled in about a quarter of the profits. Yeah. <clears throat> out of the okay, so out of the two hundred fifteen million that it brought in, sixty five million was on Disney Plus. 
Oh, so she was 65 million. I where did we get 30 million from then? Mm -hmm. That was that was Corella. Oh, okay. And she's saying she missed out on 25 million in royalties. No, she's saying she missed out on 50 million dollars in royalties. Yeah, that is a big number. Well, and that's the thing. Like they made 65 million on Disney Plus, and she's suing for 50 million. So Disney's only supposed to take 15. Yeah. Okay. I, I I don't know, man. It it's this whole thing is fucking weird and fucked up. Um. Yeah. So I, I agree with the Gerard Butler. If he was just outright shorted by the producers, right. then I can understand that. Now, you know what? I am going to say this, though. If Disney actually did offer her some sort of deal with the Disney Plus thing, show it. Talk about it. Prove it. I mean, I'm all right with the mouse getting fucked over, let me just say. I mean, I am, too, <laughs> to an extent. But this shouldn't become a standard to where, you know, they go, hey, we changed up our business model a little bit because there are still a lot of theaters that are closed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you... There's a lot and of there are a lot that just didn't recover. Right. They're, so, they're, they're gone. So, you know, the, and we talked about this months and months ago. Um, and Jay, maybe you can help me. I can't remember the name of it. There was a, a gangster movie, like a, an old mobster movie that released on Netflix only. And I'm pretty sure it was a De Niro uh, movie. The Irishman. Was the, yeah, Irishman. the Irishman. Yeah. You know, we talked about it then that, you know, that the whole scene is being changed. And, you know, that that was before Mulan came strictly out on it, and obviously it couldn't come out in theaters. But well, why can't... The, here's my thing. It, they need to adapt, right? So AMC owns the majority of the theaters. Why right. doesn't AMC come up with an app that you pay so much money and you get your new releases? Well, here's the thing. So normally AMC... Well, I'm just using them as an example. That's they, why I was Because AMC, AMC, AMC doesn't own the movie. But, so what they do so, is they enter into an agreement with the yeah. studio. So in this case, we'll say Disney. And normally there's an agreement that says, hey, this will be a 30-day, 60-day, 90-day theater exclusive before we put it on to on-demand and streaming. Because these Disney Plus uh, premiere and, you know, all the other ones, that's just on-demand. It's just instant on-demand. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, normally they come out and they, they do an agreement to where, you know, there's a, an exclusivity period. And then they go to the on-demand things or the streaming services, and normally there's an exclusivity period on that before it can be released to home media. So what they would have to do then is say, hey, you know, we want an exclusivity period on our app. And that's not going to happen. Why would Disney do that? They have their own streaming app. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, things in the landscape of acting in general is changing. And it has been for the past three or four years in all actuality. Yeah. You know, I mean, we've seen the emergence of like Amazon Prime and Netflix develop series and where these streaming platforms are developing their own content. And that then and there is when these actors and actresses should have started looking and going, hey, we need to add clauses to our contract or we need to do this and we need to change this up. And, you know, it seems like now they're being retroactive instead of being proactive and in, in seeing it coming and they're losing out on this money and they're going, well, fuck, we're losing out on this money. We need to make this up. Mm -hmm. And I, that, that's honestly what I think it is, is, you know, like I think she's going, well, shit, I missed out on something. So I'm going to turn around and sue because it. It'd be a, it might be a breach of contract. I want, I want a lawyer to decide this. It's a, it's a risk reward system. She had the option to be included into the Disney Plus premiere money. Well, you know what? She and chose not to. That, that's a reportedly, reported thing. Like we don't actually have facts on what the the, uh, actual agreement was. You know what this 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 thing was. So I'm not going to fully say that, you know, maybe that was the right or wrong because we don't know what, what it was. You know, they could have said, hey, we'll give you an extra million dollars and that'd be that. And she's like, well, I would have made 
15 millions, but I'm going to sue for 50 or whatever it may be. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. But no, I, yeah, she, I, like you were saying, she was offered some sort of deal and she's going, no, nah, I want more money. And I mean, that is her right. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying she, and, she can't do that, but. Well, we'll see if this has merit. We just got to let it go right. to the, the actual trial and shit. I think if we it want will movie never go to theaters, trial. I think if we want the movie theaters to recover, we need to change the model. Well, not we, they need to change the model of how it operates. Mm -hmm. So Rob, I know, you know, this Jay, I don't know if you do theaters actually have to buy the reels up front. Mm -hmm. So that way the studios get their cut right off the bat. Yep. Now it's up to the theater, which is why they probably make a thousand percent profit on popcorn, soda, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. yeah is and ticket sales to try and make as much money of that back as they can right because you know they're selling these reels for millions of dollars yeah well i i we don't know what it is because you know that that's a thing like you always see like projected box office numbers you know like oh this is what it's going to do there but we never really know what they are making off of selling these reels um and to be honest, I didn't know that they were buying them. I thought they were renting them, renting, basically renting the rights to show the movie. Mm. Or maybe it is renting the renting the right, renting the reels. Yeah, renting yeah. the reels. Which because I know right. that I know they they have to pay up front yeah. for the movie to mm. be shown. And a lot of times, like the the price that they pay, I think is negotiated into the exclusivity contract as well. And, you know, like, like that that's one thing. Like, you, you don't see anybody bitch, any of the theaters bitching about the exclusivity period that was on Black Widow because there wasn't one. Yeah. So maybe that goes to show a little bit about, you know, what, what the deal is. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe I'm just the asshole on this one. <laughs> no, we all are. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, we're we're gonna have to see what the what what, what goes on. Mm -hmm. That's all this is. It's now wait and see, but we got plenty of news to report on as soon as we hear it. Yeah, yeah. So stay tuned for us for information on that. Um, so real quick, just a, a quick breakdown. Uh, how much do theaters pay for a movie? The general breakdown for a Hollywood movie gives. The movie theater, 45% of every ticket sold, and the studio that created the movie, 55%. Okay. So I think so it's, it's not it's not quite a 50-50 deal, which is probably why they use projected box offices when they right. reach out or when these theaters reach out to the studios. Right. <clears throat> Fair enough. All right. Um, so, yeah, dude, I mean, we, we covered a lot of shit today. We went through a, a lot of stuff. <laughs> we argued. We had fun. <laughs> we fought. We cried. We hugged. It was great. <laughs> I'm dead. Now it's time for Rob to yell at us once the show's over. No. Yeah. Jesus. Well, if you're going to yell at me, like, I'm going to be taking a shit while you do it. So <laughs> Actually, Rob doesn't have time. It is 11.20, and he... Oh, no, Rob's off work today. I'm off work like today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you guys get my full wrath. No. Oh, God. <laughs> um, but, yeah, thanks for checking out the show. Um, check out all of our links, which will be in both the description of the podcast, because I figured out how to do that, and in the description down below if you're watching us on YouTube. Look at um, that. We're figuring shit out. I know, right? <laughs> Check out our socials. Get yourself some merch, including one of these sweet hats. Uh, and yeah, come join us in some talk. Join our Discord. But as always, we'll catch you guys at the Warp Point. Peace. Peace. Oh, no, not the go live button. <laughs> <laughs>